Welcome to MLB The Show 22 feature premieres. In each feature premiere, we take a look at what's new and updated in MLB The Show 22. Tune in each Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific for a new episode. You can watch on Twitch and YouTube, so let's get into it and talk about our new commentary and presentation team. As you probably saw earlier this week, MLB The Show 22 welcomes John Boog Shambi and Chris Singleton as the new commentary team. And we spoke with them. Let's take a quick look. All right. What's up, everybody? I'm Ramon Russell from the MLB The Show development team. And I am joined by two very special guests, our new commentary team, which oh, is made yeah. up of John Shambi and Chris Singleton. <laughs> How you doing, guys? What's, what's up, Ramon? How you doing? I am fantastic. I'm better now. Yeah, I have to ask you a question. Okay. For our fans out there who are going to be buying MLB The Show 22, can you give us, give them a little bit of background of who you are and what's your background? Go ahead, Boog. Uh, I'm John Chomby. They call me Boog. Uh, I got that nickname a while back after the baseball player Boog Powell, big redheaded guy. Look him up. I'm sort of, you know, like the hors d'oeuvre, smaller version of him. But I, I've worked as a major league broadcaster with the Marlins, with the Braves. I'm now the voice of the Cubs on television. And uh, Chris and I together for um, for 11 years were the voices of Major League Baseball on ESPN Radio. So that's, that's kind of the, the sketch version as well. I still call basketball games as well for ESPN. But Chris and I have worked together for, for a long time uh, on games on the radio. Yeah, and I would uh, echo that. It's it's more about who we are together. You know, myself, I'm a former Major League Baseball player and uh, played for the White Sox, Orioles, Oakland A's, Tampa Bay Rays, went into broadcasting pretty quickly after my playing career and spent a couple years with the White Sox on radio. And then I went to ESPN doing baseball tonight for, you know, four years or so. And then that's when I transitioned over to doing uh, radio with uh, Boo. So the first question is, how excited were you when you got the call that Kirby St. John and MLB The Show team wanted both of you to basically form this tandem again to take us into the future of commentary for the future of the franchise? Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, look, Chris and I have been working together since 2010, and to get an opportunity to continue to do it, and it's such a, an honor and a compliment that they – you know, looked at us and, you know, Kirby and those guys decided that, you know, we were the right fit. And I think as it went on, we really felt as though where we really understood that they got us. They understood what we tried to translate in a broadcast in terms of having fun and and in terms of trying to nerd out a little bit. And uh, yeah, I it, when I found out, I was uh, I was just over the moon. It was so exciting. Yeah, I was I was excited as well. I was little unsure of okay what does this you know really look like um just doing you know reading lines uh but as we you know got into it and saw that hey these were real baseball people they were in the department and what they wanted um that's when i think it started to get exciting you know for me because we you know enjoy working together we've worked together for a long time and you know probably this might be a first, you know, in the game of having two guys that actually work together for such a long time that are doing the game together. Um, and I think that people will, you know, they'll hear that, you know, they'll hear um, just how connected we are, even in a video game space. Um, if they listen to a real game, they'll see, but, you know, it's, uh, we, we've had, we've been very blessed. Yeah, so probably my, one of my most important questions I have for both of you is how does it feel to be a part of this new way to talk to a new generation of baseball fans like what has that been like for you and and how, how does that process work and what are you looking forward to be able to bring to the table to a new group of audience from a video game perspective um and being able to help them become and fall more in love with the game like we all have by playing mlb the show yeah chris that's well, the part right it's exciting isn't it that you get a, yeah. a chance for, i mean we like to have fun right i mean sure. that that's that's who we are when we're off the air. And I think selling how much fun the game is, the sport is, I, I think that that's one of the, the most exciting things to be able to make that connection with the fans. Right, Chris? Yeah, and I think as well um, with where we are now in the sport, generation, numbers, 
analytics, things like that, we're able to, you know, comfortably incorporate into the game because they are a part of our game. So we're, you know, we're not going to act like they're not and we wouldn't want to, but creating a nice balance between explaining and trying to teach in certain situations, but then also bringing the analytics because you're going to hear, you're going to watch a game, you're going to hear about exit velocity, or you're going to hear about, you know, these different, you know, metrics that uh, are used. So um, obviously Boog is very strong in the Sabre community and I've come along and a lot of it's been because of him. But I think as well, when we talk about so many different things that that's being done in this new edition of MLB The Show in terms of it being more of a real feel, I think also incorporating those things that are truly in games now and a part of games of, hey, what was the velocity? What was the exit velocity? What was the launch angle? Things like that. Um, I think it's going to just help to perhaps allow that person that maybe plays the game but doesn't watch the game, but all of a sudden one day when they turn on the game and they're hearing similar language and all of a sudden they connect on a deeper level and then perhaps make the sport something that they become more of a fan of. And Ramon the whole time doing it with a smile on your face, right? Hearing that we're having a good time. I think that's the biggest thing. I think that's the thread for the whole time we've been working together. And I think that's one of the things that we tried to translate on the game that he and I are enjoying being with each other, watching baseball, broadcasting baseball. And so to be two of the people in charge of selling the game and the sport. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And you have a whole new set of fans who now can have that relationship and tie, tie it one to one because you're going to be talking about their performance in the digital sense of baseball that they can now when they watch baseball and go to a baseball game it all just makes more sense we we increase everybody's knowledge of the game and hopefully the love of the game so it's a perfect match made in heaven mm -hmm. i agree this is amazing to hear it sounds like this was a match made in heaven yeah. it's we can't wait for everybody to be able to hear both of you in the game. And remember, this is just year one. We're just starting. This is a new relationship. We're so happy to have both of you be a part of the MLB The Show family. And thank you again for taking the time to talk to us. Thank right, thanks, Ramon. We want to thank them for taking time out of their very busy days to talk to us. But let's bring in Kirby and Drew to talk all things new commentary and show off some of the new presentation elements in MLB The Show 22. How you doing, guys? Hey, doing good, Ramon. Happy to be here. Good. Fired up to show off uh, what we've been working hard on. But before we dive into everything, we at the San Diego studio put together a little something for our very good friend, Matt Vaskurgeon, for all the work he's done for MLB The Show over the years, which spanned 16 total titles. Roll the footage, Colin. Hello, baseball fans. I'm Matt Vaskurgeon. Welcome to the show. And now a lunging catch, and he does a full gainer as well, but somehow hangs on for the second out. He's there, but oh, he clanks it off his glove. And look out as that fastball ran in and got him. Ouch, Frank. Stopped by the post office to get stamps on the way to mailing in that swing. It's three and two now. And a diving effort there at third. Good way to bruise your ribs. How much for one of them ribs? And he wasn't going to hit that one with an oar. A ball that's carrying, carrying, carrying. Oh, high, deep. That is a moonshot, folks. A long home run. And just like the ex-girlfriend who ain't coming back, that one is gone. Santa Maria, game over. Yeah, thanks again to Matty V. Uh, it was a pleasure to work with him over the years, and of course with Mark DeRosa, Dan Plesac, Heidi Watney, um, you know, uh, all great professionals in what they've done, and it was, it was amazing working with them as well. Awesome. Now let's talk about MLB The Show 22's commentary team and the new commentary crew. Kirby, I know this is a project that you and the team have been working on for over a few development cycles, right? That's right. Yeah, we've been working on, uh, you know, getting a new commentary crew into our game for uh, about three cycles uh, off and on, of course, working, you know, on the on the current games as well. Um, but yes, we've been we've been working towards that for about three cycles. Uh, it's a 
massive undertaking. Um, you know, as we mentioned, Matt being in the game for for 16 years, so there's a lot. Uh, you know, so there's a lot to work on. There. There's a lot to get into the game and make sure we get it right. Baseball is a really dynamic sport. There's a lot to cover, so uh, we knew we had a big task ahead of us. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it's exciting to finally be getting it into the game. Okay. All right, so we've been talking for a while, Kirby. Let's take a listen. You got a clip for us? I do. Here we go. And now the one fly ball down the right field line. If it's there, it's gone, and that is gone. Rafael Devers rounds the bases. He's done it again. His second homer of the game. And just like that, they're out front. It's 8-7. Singy, the ball is jumping off his bat. Yes, it is. Tons of loud contact. Man, it's been impressive. No doubt in my mind, just about everybody in this ballpark holding their breath on that one. I tell you, just barely snuck it inside the foul pole and talk about a huge swing. That's it in this ball game. Could be the biggest swing of this ball game. We'll see. Swing and a high fly ball, pretty well struck right field. And that one is gone. Tom Murphy sent it out. His fourth home run of the season. The Mariners strike first. It's 2 nothing. That's an incredible job of letting that breaking ball get deep, thrusting your hands, and driving it out the other way. That's how you practice it in the cage. Incredible when you can translate it into the ball game. Awesome. So this is all new territory. We're going into a new frontier for commentary for the franchise. What was your goals overall um, for how commentary should move forward um, in MLB The Show 22 and past this year's release? I think first and foremost, just when it came to finding the right, you know, the right commentators and the right crew, we wanted to find we wanted to find uh, two broadcasters that had a good rapport with each other and had a good history with each other that have worked together. And Boog and Singy uh, have worked together for over a decade um, calling games. So there was that natural rapport, you know, built in. That was one thing um, just in terms of finding the right crew. But then, you know, as we were started thinking about where we wanted to go, I think one big thing was just having kind of a, a bigger, you know, kind of dy dynamic range of the type of commentary that we can have as far as, um, you know, kind of nailing those low leverage spots of the game as well as the high leverage parts of the game so that there is, you know, kind of that bigger spread in terms of how you're going to be hearing, you know, those calls and how they're going to be approaching each situation. Nice. And so a little birdie told me that you've actually taken some some content from real life. H how does that work out in this new system? Yeah, absolutely. That was another big focus for us. Um, we a lot of a lot of the content that we got right off the bat um, was approached by taking live calls from real major league games, and we were able to work out getting um, you know some audio from from real major league games and just exploring how we were going to be able to fit those types of calls into our game and into our system. Uh, we also got a big amount of uh, content right off the bat by actually having Boog and Singy sit down watching our game and calling it just like they'd be calling a real life game. So that actually was really educational for us because we got to see how they approached calling our game. Uh, but we also got a ton of really natural quality content right off the bat by doing that uh, because they were in their element. They were, they were calling a game, but they were watching MLB The Show. So um, that, was, that was a big approach as well. Kirby, let's see another clip. Zanino swings and crushes one. That's out to deep left field. And it hits the fence. The relay throw. Not in time. He's safe. And a run comes in to score. A little more backspin on that instead of the top spin. And he's jogging around the bases rather than pulling up at second. Marco at third with two away. That one the other way. In comes the runner from third, and they take a two-run lead. 
A couple of hits in a row for him here. Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages, working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. Stocky right-handed hitter got big time power. This is a very important inning here. After scoring all those runs, you want your pitcher to come out and just mow them down. The offense has worked hard. It's shut down inning time. Worm burner into the outfield for a knock. Well, that may end up being an at-bat we go back to later on when this game is over. Just a simple ground ball the other way that had eyes on it, man. Sometimes that's all you need to do. Just let the ball travel, put the ball in play, and just hope it finds a hole. Now a huge at-bat in this game coming up. That sounds fantastic. It almost sounds like it was live. Yeah, like we were talking about earlier, um, we were able to tap into a lot of the calls that Boog and Singy have done on ESPN. Um, I worked at ESPN for 12 years prior to coming over here, and I remember we, we would always record the isolated announcer mics, and I'm like, man, if we could just grab some of that content, get it into our game, um, you know, it'd just be so authentic. And, and the other thing that you don't really think about is you see the home run calls and stuff, but, but where I really think it adds the most value is just the pitch calls, the variety that you're going to hear um, from getting all those live calls, because it's not just the home run calls, but it's just your average 2-1 pitch coming in and you hear something that happened in real life and we can mix that in with the stuff where you've recorded to, uh, to kind of provide more variety and more authentic feel there. And for me, what it really did is set the standard for what we needed to try to get for recording, right? Obviously, we couldn't get everything from live calls, so it set the standard for, hey, what do we, how do we want our recorded content to feel like as well? And make sure that the live calls, the recorded content and everything else seamlessly works into the game so that you don't know the difference. Right, so... It we're just going down the list here. So we've got improved dynamic range of play-by-play -play calls in addition to a huge amount of content taken from real life, which you just alluded to, right, Drew? Yeah, that's it. Big focus on improved dynamic range. And we we're, we're now have the ability to take actual commentary from real life and mix it in. Two major, major new benefits. But we're, we won't stop there. We have more to talk about. But before we do, let's listen to some more audio clips. Let's do it. On the ground, two ball. Good feed. That's one. Over to first, safe. Ground ball right side. Could be two. To Adamas, that's one. And that's two. Pitcher made the pitch, and his players made the play behind him. Nice job. 4 6 3, inning, ending double play. First pitch doesn't find the zone. <laughs> that pitch wasn't even close, and they still got a check swing out of it. He's going to have to make an adjustment and make it fast. The 1 0. On the ground, right side. Four, six, three, and they turn the double play. This sounds so good. So, Kirby, like you mentioned before we started recording, one of the other big improvements to this new commentary flow is stitching enhance enhancements. Can we take a deep dive and talk about that for a moment? Sure, yeah. I mean, first of all, stitching is basically the process of taking two, three files, putting them in together so that they kind of seamlessly flow together. Uh, and that's, you know, it's a pretty challenging thing to do when you're talking about, you know, wanting to have variety and be able to be dynamic, be able to, you know, adjust with the play. So we definitely do a lot of stitching when it comes to player names, but we also do it, you know, within within a single call. He makes the catch and there's two away or he makes the catch and so and so is retired. So one thing we saw in some of those clips actually is a lot of what we did with our base hit color where we're actually able to stitch multiple sequences together with Singy where he's able to comment on kind of the importance of the at bat, the importance of that base hit kind of how it took place, what the pitch was, how he hit it, and then look forward maybe to the next at bat or what's coming up now as a result of the new sequence. So those are some of the things we're able to do. The other big thing about it is that it adds a lot of variety to what you're hearing. You're not hearing one long line uh, all, all at once. You're able to kind of chop it up and um, you know kind of sequence those things together into a uh, more dynamic That's you know, fantastic. Thought. So let's take another clip that showcases the new stitching enhancements. And a pitch. 
Outside corner, got him looking. He can't believe it. A well, big strikeout right there, and maybe a little controversial with the call. I think he got a little bit of favor on the mound. No question about it. It's not exactly what you want to see in a big spot like that, and I'm sure there's some chirping going on from the dugout, making it clear that wasn't his best call behind the plate today. This sounds fantastic, but what I also heard was it seemed like the crowd was kind of more in tune with what was happening in that play. Has some work been done with the crowd mix? Yeah, I mean, our, our audio team has killed it this year. You could see after that strikeout, the kind of crowd erupted in boos. And um, the, the, the logic behind when the crowd is happy or sad or mad has, has drastically improved. And then just the, the overall sound effects, what you hear the bat crack, which I know has always been a, a community favorite, uh, but also the glove pops have improved. Just the sounds of the entire stadium tied in with the new announcing team we're just delivering like a full audio package that I'm super stoked right. about. Right, so I think that's the first time we've announced that. It's not just that we have a new commentary team. The entire audio package for the game has either been reworked or completely refreshed. Let's also jump right in and let, let's talk more about this newly designed conversation system, Kirby. Yeah, so as you know, watching baseball games, uh, you know, a big part of what is being you know, is being talked about by the announcers is, you know, kind of what what's going on in the game, situational stuff, and sometimes just straight up banter, right, about the stadium or about what they did yesterday or, you know, what they like about the ballpark and what's going on around the league, that sort of stuff. So uh, we wanted to make sure that we were setting ourselves up for a great future of that kind of conversational commentary, you know, not just this year, but like moving forward, what can we do systematically to make this really work for us? So uh, we developed an entirely new conversation system. We kind of call it chatter uh, in, internally, um, but it allows us to kind of seamlessly weave the conversations into an at bat or into a into an inning. And even honestly, you know, uh, into a game and we can refer back to things. But specifically, you know, if you bring something up within an at bat, we can kind of still weave in the commentary or the play-by-play -play, i mean but continue the conversation awesome uh, do you have a clip that kind of illustrates that yeah absolutely let's get into it two outs Xander. base is empty Bogart. and here is xander bogarts obviously a guy who makes good contact hits for average but one of the things in today's game the value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties at the belt and fires they say it went. They're so reliant on the matchups nowadays, Chris, and it's huge when you don't have to sit a guy or platoon him. When you can hit, you know, both sides in terms of pitchers' arms, you're a guy that it's hard to take out of the lineup, and I think it's very important today when everything is under the microscope. Back here at Chavez Ravine, bottom of the second. Chris Taylor down. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. That misses, ball two. Well, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. Next offering is in for a strike. This all sounds fantastic, and this is just you recording clips in the game during active development, right? Yeah, so we, we designed the conversations to be able to have kind of some shorter, you know, thoughts so that we're able to weave it into the at bat, like I said. So allow the play by play to breathe, uh, but still continue the conversation. So that was a big emphasis. And another thing that's cool is that we've set it up so that we can really actually branch those conversations as well. So as things maybe progress or as things happen uh, in the game or just for variety's sake, we can take the conversation in different directions uh, and can you know continue that through line you know, in, in those ways. That sounds fantastic. So Kirby, how many recording sessions were you able to have during these uh, two and three years of development for this new system? Yeah, so we did a total of 128 individual recording sessions um, that ended up totaling about 350 hours uh, of recording with with Boog and Singy. Um, a good amount of that time was was them together working in the booth you know together or uh, or at least uh, at the same time and that was a big emphasis for us making sure that they could record at, you know together work feed off of each other um, ended up with about 45,000 uh, new audio lines. And that's just the beginning. It's a it's a foundation, right, Kirby? That's right. This is this is the foundation. This is our, you know, first year new commentary crew and, and you know, there's a, a lot that we're really excited about uh, you know, doing, you know, moving forward as well. 
Earlier this week, we had a new legend reveal, the Moose. Let's take a listen and see his gameplay reveal. So, almost ready to get underway, and on the hill in this one, Mike Messina. What do we have on him? Yeah, Boog, when you're a teammate of a guy like this, you love when it's his turn to pitch. He's out there on the mound carrying himself with a ton of confidence. That gives other guys confidence that, hey, the other team's not going to score much. All we've got to do is have good at-bats, put up some runs, and we should be able to get a win. He's got some of the best stuff around the league, so if he's on, he has the ability to control the game, and guys aren't really going to get much to hit. Kicks and deals. There's a strike. I mean, that's perfect location right on the black. I mean, over and over again, this guy demonstrates the ability to hit those spots. They're so tough to do anything with as a hitter. And there you go. We're coming back. Mike Musina, one of the new legends for MLB The Show 22. Yeah, shout out to the animations group as well. Uh, looks sweet with that unique stretch position position so, that he took with the Orioles and the Yankees back in the day. It's not just about the new commentary team at MLB The Show 22. What is commentary without presentation updates? So Drew, you're going to tell us all about some of the new awesome presentations at MLB The Show 22. But first, you're kind of new to the team, Ken. You explain what it is that you do here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a people guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I help oversee the presentation and commentary team as a whole. Um, there's a ton of uh, coordination that has to go into presentation and commentary. They can't work separately. They have to work together. When the announcers talk about something, we have to have the visuals to back it up. Um, so I kind of help link everything together between the, the audio, the commentary, and the presentations. So you brought some clips to show us, right, Drew? I did. The, the commentary stuff we saw earlier was great. Um, the pre rest of the presentation team felt like they needed to keep up. So. Um, yeah, first first off, we, we kind of went a new route this year. We created a regional theme where you're sitting at home, you're watching your favorite team, and you kind of have your regional sports network. So we created all these elements that you're seeing to kind of make you feel like we're in tune with the traditions that are happening in all these different cities and stadiums. Um, tried to add personal touch to all the, um, all the different teams out there, make you really feel like you're, you're in your home, and hopefully bring some nostalgia uh, to the community out there. And, our guys just killed it. We hired um, a new motion graphics artist who, as you can see, has really stepped up his game with some of these um, 3D elements you oh, see yes, on your screen. Has. Yeah. So throughout all the, the art, um, we just have more team branding, more um, logos accentuated, the team colors and all that kind of stuff. So what you're seeing right now is all the regional themes. So it's it's supposed to be tied into to the team you're playing with. This will either be the home team if it's you know, computer versus computer, or it'll default to the user team. Um, you can see here we have some slogans that go on the score bug after you hit a home run that are tied to each franchise. Um, sorry, I'm a Mariners fan, so there's probably some <laughs> <laughs> extra Mariners stuff in here, but you'll get some uh, some San Diego love for anybody who's Padres, who's a Padres fan too. This looks fantastic. So, Drew, tell everybody about your background. Yeah, so I've uh, been with the team now for three years, but. Uh, the 12 years prior, I was a producer for ESPN. I sat in the TV trucks outside the stadium. And so I've really, really tried to take what I learned at ESPN um, with all these elements, replay angles, cameras, all that kind of stuff, and, and apply it to our game. Right. So jumping back into themes, people might have noticed our Eagle Eye fans. We have a new MLB The Show theme, right? Yeah. So the other option for a broadcast theme is what we call it, where you can, you know, the, all the graphics and stuff match each other on the screen is the show theme. And we tried to really make this about big games. So these are set as default for opening day, all-star game, postseason, games of the week. And we used a lot of these, these 3D elements, but tried to really uh, make you feel like you're in a big moment watching That's a big great. game. You so can awesome. see some of the stuff there. Um, great backgrounds on all these, these, uh, these graphics as well. Um, so again, the team really, really stepped up their game. And, and this theme is more about um, the big moments that you're used to seeing on TV, whether you're watching uh, an all-star game or a World Series. Um, so you can kind of see a lot of the elements that are new here. Um, but really just the, both packages, I think, really another goal was just to tie everything together, you know, and have the replay transitions match the score bug, match the bottom line ticker. Here's another new addition. We've got Google StatCast this year to really bring some authentic authenticity uh, to our StatCast presentations, uh, which came out really well. 
And um, lastly, you'll see here we have a uh, win expectancy bar on the, on the score bug in the bottom right. It dynamically changes as teams get out of big jams or hit home runs. And, That's uh, awesome. Uh, and it was really fun to watch everybody try to figure out what that bar actually was during the tech yeah. test. <laughs> it's the so, win expectancy bar. <laughs> so the art team and the presentation team, they have been really, really busy. Like you mentioned, Google Stack has pitch sequence all of these new art elements and a new theme. Is there anything else you want to highlight that's been added to presentation this year? Lastly, I, I mentioned big games, but um, for the World Series, we really tried to knock it out of the park and get some payoff. You know, if you if you go all the way through an MTO or a franchise and you get to the big game, the big series, um, so we paid it off with some some World Series elements, um, as you can see here. It's just some really cool stuff um, to help you, you know, really be immersed in this being a big moment. You know, the crowds are bigger. The announcers are more excited, and we upped our art game as well to kind of match that. The whole intro sequence for all of these big games just feels like so just, you know, engrossing, I guess. Just, you know, engaging is what I should say. You know? One thing our fans really love is our score tickers and the slide outs. Has there been any work done or any new features, any new stats that our fans can look forward to seeing in the new slide outs? Well, like I said, the Google StatCast stuff has been uh, really fun to work on. Um, We've enhanced our bottom line ticker. We were able to show um, headlines that are happening from around the league now. So if somebody has hit for the cycle, it'll tell you on the bottom line ticker. If um, somebody has seven RBIs in a game, if uh, a player's closing in on the home run record, we'll, we're able to kind of bring the, the whole experience of the league. No, onto hitter, our bottom no line hitters, ticker. shutouts, like all that type of stuff. So, Drew, you also mentioned something about new cameras. What, what's going on here? Yeah, so one of the other things is – our team here at San Diego Studios does such a great job on the stadiums. We thought it would be cool to really immerse people within the stands. So we have these new fan cams, we're calling them, where it really puts you in the seat. And um, you can you can see different cool points of view. We, we went through every stadium and kind of found cool seats and, and iconic places to, to watch games. Um, and we actually set up 150 of these cameras in all 30 ballparks that are spread around the stadium. So end of innings of teams taking the field before the game. It kind of immerses you more in that that feeling. Um, like I mentioned, I'm a Mariners fan. I haven't I haven't gone to a game in Seattle in years, and I miss it. And it was cool just kind of like seeing my old seats and stuff like that. So it's just a cool thing. Uh, I think that the community is going to enjoy. This is amazing. Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation, Kirby and Drew. Are we forgetting anything? Anything else you guys want to mention? I think really the main things I'd like to say are you know it's been. So amazing uh, working with Boog and Singy during this process and getting to this point. Really looking forward to the future of that. It's been a lot of fun working with those guys. They're awesome, amazing professionals. Uh, a lot of fun to work with them. But most importantly, I, I've got to give a huge shout out uh, to several people. Ben, Jordan, Kevin, Scott, Austin, Sean, Kurt, Steve, Omar. Really the whole presentation and audio team, which we have. A, a, our team has grown a lot to support all of the stuff that you've been seeing um, in this feature premiere. This was a big lift. And so really, really proud of our team and what we've been able to accomplish. So huge shout out, definitely um, major team effort. Yeah, I think for me, just the takeaway is how motivated our team has been to, to really bring out a, a, a first class presentation and commentary system, which I think we've delivered. Um, same thing with Kirby, um, our art team, the audio team, our programmers, um, they just killed it this year and they're extremely motivated. Um, to go above and beyond and, and really find like the perfect presentation and, and the, the attention to detail is really strong and I'm, I'm super excited that everybody else gets to uh, to see what we've created. That's, we covered so much today. You know, on the presentation side, Google StatCast, new pitch sequence, new sizzle reels, new cameras in the stands, which is another fantastic addition. We also got to see Drew showed us our new MLB The Show themed and our new themed regional overlays, which is fantastic. Kirby mentioned commentary, major changes, improved dynamic range, huge amount of content taken from real life broadcasts, major audio stitching enhancement, newly redesigned conversation system, over 128 recording sessions. The commentary and presentation team have been very, very busy. So much going on with commentary and presentation. We are so excited to have Boog and Singy as the new commentary crew for MLB The Show. Totally new commentary system allowing for more dynamic and engaging calls. Presentation stepping it up with a new team specific regional theme to really make you feel like you're playing your home team with a fresh look if you make it to the World Series. 
and those new fan cams. Hope you all enjoyed hearing about the new updates to commentary and presentation, but we still have some feature premieres left until early access on April 1st. We went over online co-op. We covered MLB The Show 22 coming to Nintendo Switch. We went deep, deep, deep into pitching, hitting, and fielding, including gameplay. Ahead, we have Road to the Show and Ball Player, and we end with Diamond Dynasty live content and esports on March 31st. But next week, I'll be joined by Clayton and Tim, and we're going to talk about March to October and Franchise Mode. So make sure you tune in at Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific on Twitch and YouTube. Again, thanks to Kirby and Drew and everyone on the commentary and presentation teams for all their hard work this year. Thanks to Boog and Singy for joining us and Stephen, Carson, and Colin behind the scenes. See you next week.